When we talk about denial, deceit, and delusion around here, we're not kidding. We're talking about delusion. Now, delusion comes in a big spectrum from a little bit of delusion to full-on delusion. But so when we get a full on, when we get a full on case of full on delusion, well, that's something we need to take a look at. So this 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 is this is the beginning of the delusion. This is an article out of the Inquirer Daily News by the world famous Maria Panner Panaritis. This of course is written on February the first, two thousand eighteen, the beginning of uh, Black History Month. And, uh, you know, Maria feels like she's got to be sticking up for the brothers and the sisters because they really can't stick up for themselves. <laughs> so this is let's set the stage with this little article here. It's about Judge Clyde W. Waite, and uh, he's a low-key jurist. He won't speak up for himself, so I will call foul for him because he has been humiliated once too often for being black in Bucks County. That's a suburb of Philadelphia. That's where all the people from Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia, moved when they got tired of the violence, harassment, uh, and denial, deceit, and delusion inside the Philadelphia surrounding black-on-white crime and violence. Okay, so uh, he, uh, he's, he graduated from Yale Law School. He's 73 years old. And he is a Republican senior county court judge. He's 70, and, and he was sleeping in his own bed in the Philadelphia suburbs when half a dozen policemen swarmed his house. It's not okay. This was the third case of mistaken identity over a sterling career spanning four decades in the whitest of Philadelphia suburban counties in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. It's not okay that even mentioning his travails in this column will trigger unsavory responses from readers who would rather spew rage than consider a humbling dose of reflection. But we have no choice but to listen and learn. The integrity of our humanity is at stake. We must try to be better. Okay, then he went. Then he, they go through the story when he was a poor little African American child. He didn't have any money for shoes or milk or anything like that. Um, then uh, somebody said somebody thought they saw a burglar in his house, and they were they were the cops. All of a sudden, responded to his house. They said, "Come out, come out." This was a Newton Township. They were aiming flashlights through through his blinds. Above the judge's pillow was the night after Thanksgiving. He had just come back from an out-of-town out trip. <laughs> while he was, while the cops were outside yelling at him and waking him up because they thought there might have been a burglar in the house, he thought about grabbing his gun. Thank God he didn't. One false move by either side might have triggered calamity. Who can forget in 2009, police in Massachusetts responding to a burglary report arrested African-American professor Henry Louis Gates at his own home. <laughs> Remember the guy that ended up at the beer summit, the guy that basically was totally defiant and would not cooperate with the cops who were responding to a, a report of a burglary or trespassing at his house. I was dazed and confused. He's sharing, he's sharing his story publicly for the first time. After he sh he started, uh, the judge wants to talk about his situation of being stopped three times in his life because he decided that the time had come to stir a reflection about stereotypes and prejudice. The burglary story will be part of a speech he plans to give Friday at a tribute dinner in his honor at Doylestown, co-sponsored by the local historical society and the Bucks County African American Museum, a new group with no such building just yet. The timing coincides with the start of Black History Month. Uh, okay, I think you got... Uh, I, I think you got the whole thing. The story ended well, and the cops, when they saw who it was, they go, hey, judge, what's up? There's not th Only here it says only 3% of the people in that county are black, meaning the, the, the museum we just heard about, it doesn't actually exist except in the minds of the people who pretend it exists. There is no museum. 
what there is is a bunch of black people who are trying to force the white people up there to give them money to buy a building and put a bunch of slavery artifacts in one place. That's what that is. Okay, he was mistaken for this, mistaken for that. This kid is a Hollywood grad, another one, Harvard grad, another one's a Hollywood comedy writer. One thing Ho- Wait hopes to get across in his speech is there a way, is there, there are ways past those stereotypes. We, there is a need for people to see minorities in a position of authority, he said. That means TV, public office, in our neighborhoods. I want to make sure that people realize that minorities have a more difficult time doing the right thing. And the reporter comes in and reminds us how virtuous she is by saying, I hope that by giving voice to Clyde Waite's humiliations, it may somehow humble us all into accepting that society, that means us the people, have heaped an unfair burden on good people like him. We are better than that. At least we should be. Okay, that's article one. Okay, so we know this guy is basically a walking saint, not guilty of anything in his entire life, and uh, you know there should be a there should be a big sign on his house. The cops are never allowed to come anywhere near this guy's house for any reason. Get a load of this story. Look at the headline here. This is this is three weeks later. Bucks County Judge Clyde W. Wade, the guy we just heard, read about, he was injured in an incident at his home on Monday. The first story said the judge was on the phone with his neighbor. Then all of a sudden, the next thing he remembers is running across to his neighbor, running across the lawn to his neighbor's house with some kind of injury to his eye and his phone all messed up. So they called the cops. Okay, let's pick up this story because we're about to enter Delusionville. Then as soon as we're done Delusionville, we're going to go right into, rea- we're going to go back to reality with a good, healthy dose of judicial reality to kind of set our, set our minds right once again. Okay, so I'm going to read this word for word. Bucks County, the first paragraph. Bucks County Judge Clyde W. Waite was injured Monday night at his Newton area home in what he first called an attack, but then later said might have been an hallucination. He said, uh, he told, the judge originally told the papers that he was attacked in his house. It may very well be that I saw something that wasn't there. I may have seen this or ran out of the house. They filed a police report. And he's the only African-American judge in the county. He didn't know of anybody who would want to break into his house and hurt him. Um, He was on a phone with a friend, another judge. They were talking about things judges talk about at 9 o'clock at night. Next thing I remember, I was running across a field to my next-door neighbor's house. You know, kind of like Judge DeLott up in Cincinnati. He said he was bleeding from a gash on his head. His left eye was swollen shut. The cell phone in his hand was mangled. There was nothing, nothing was amiss at his house, no broken windows, no forced entry. Nothing was taken. The doors were unlocked. The guy who, uh, the civilian who runs the Bucks County court system said, I've always found the man to be sharp as a tack. My concern is for how, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate this being a problem. The district attorney's office said Wednesday afternoon, that it would have no additional updates on the investigation. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, okay, Judge. All right, that's just you know, there's one that's one article of delusion. You can you gotta suck that reporter in the, into your delusion of the first time that you've led this unbelievably difficult life. That, you know, and minorities have it harder. Black people have it harder than everybody else. Yes, Judge, we've heard that before. We hear from, uh, we hear from judges a lot. 
How about this story? How about this story from Mobile, Alabama, where a guy was walking around on the street doing unbelievably horrific things to a grandmother and her grandson at their house, only because a bunch of judges have decided in Mobile, just like in your courtroom, they've decided that, well, there's too much racism. Too many white people are picking on too many fellows for no reason whatsoever. Too many black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything. That's the delusion, Judge. Here's the reality. After a woman and her grandson were brutally attacked in her Theodore home, she is still suffering from severe injuries. Today, that grandmother wanted to face her alleged attacker in court, but her injuries kept her home. News 5's Katerina Lukatid sat down with May Thornton, who says this attack never should have happened to her. While the bruising and swelling has gone down, May Thornton is nowhere close to healed. Her face still severely broken in several places. I can't breathe good and I wake up at night gasping. She remembers January 2nd like it was yesterday, the day she says Charles Darrington kicked in her back door, beating and stabbing her while she slept, then attacking her grandson with a metal pipe. The memories haunting. I dream the same dream every night almost that he's buzzing, he's hit me in the face with a pipe and he's yelling, spit your teeth out. Today, her alleged attacker was in court for a preliminary hearing, but Thornton says the attack on her life should have never happened. In the past year, Darrington has been arrested four times. He was released on bond after the first three arrests for charges including strong arm robbery and domestic violence. I just don't feel like that's right on somebody like this. Violent people should not get out. The DA's office made multiple motions to revoke Darrington's bond in the past year. Those motions either denied or the hearings for consideration lingered in the system for months. I am so mad because of what I'm going through and my grandson's going through for the rest of our lives. Today, a judge granted the state's request to revoke Darrington's bond, something Thornton says gives her some solace knowing he won't hurt anyone else, but she strongly believes the court system needs to change. No tear-jerking article from the local press in Miami about this old lady how the judges down there are out of control, letting black people out on the street because they're convinced that the only reason that black people are forced to commit crimes is because white racism is forcing them to. You think I'm making this up? You think I'm dramatizing this? You think I'm covering this out of whole cloth? Let me ask you one question. When you look at all the stories we do here, when you see all the videos we have, when you read the paper, do your own research, and when you see this happen over and over and over and over, people with really long records, people out on bail, people out on no cash bail for very serious and violent things, when you see them do the same thing over and over again, don't you think there's a chance that there's something really weird happening, something very dangerous happening, something that could happen to you someday? And that, that doesn't matter if you're, if you're white or black or Asian or young or old or gay or straight or Amish or Eskimo or a kitty, a puppy or a turtle. How someday you could be the target of this black violence, mayhem and destruction so wildly out of proportion all over the country. All over the country. That's what you call cherry picking. All over the damn country. Now we get the Philadelphia Daily News to remind us that black people are victims all the time. When the numbers show just the opposite, the numbers show that black people are predators on white people, just like this old lady and her grandson. You don't think those two lives are now changed forever? You think they are, you just don't want to say it because you don't want to make the black kids angry?